So you need to know how to manage uh, drug overdoses and toxicity and there are a number of ones that come up uh, in finals. The main ones being sort of paracetamol, benzodiazepines, digoxin and opioids but we'll go through them all here. So paracetamol you would treat uh, with uh, acetylcysteine. also um, abbreviated to NAC for n acetyl system, and what it does is it increases the metabolism of the drug by restoring uh, gl your um, um, glutathione stores within the liver. Mercury and lead uh, can be treated uh, with, uh, this is something that's not very common anymore, lead pipes went away, mercury is not very common anymore and arsenic is not very common, but uh, the drug used to treat it is called dimercaparol. Dimercaprol. Dimercaprol. For benzodiazepines, you would use flumazenil. And you would beware of the seizure potential with using um with using um, benzodiazepines. It can be the fact that whenever people come into a &E, they will have taken benzodiazepines and alcohol because an alcohol works at the same receptor site as benzodiazepines or similar receptor sites to benzodiazepines. Beta blockers, uh, you would give in beta blocker overdose, for example, and calcium channel blockers, so put and CCBs, you would give glucagon. And you would give it, and you have to give quite large doses of it, so you need the bigger vials of it. Glucagon only really comes in, in smaller syringes, but sometimes you can have to make up a glucagon infusion. You can also, in late stages, use a 20% lipid emulsion, which is basically just fat uh, in s solution, um, to try to absorb the beta blocker drug, which is present in the serum, uh, into that fat, uh, so it can't be used at the receptor site. Digoxin, uh, you would use, it can be called, uh, it's called Digibind, but it essentially is um, a, a digoxin immune uh, FAB. And how Digibind works is that it binds to uh, digoxin rendering un un unable to bind to its action sites on target cells. Um, signs of digoxin uh, toxicity might be a hemodynamically unstable arrhythmia and organ damage. A uh, digoxin level than 4 nanograms per mil if there's a chronic ingestion or digoxin level than greater than 10 nanograms per mil if it's an acute ingestion and a potassium greater than 5 and symptomatic of their hyperkalemia. So you have to treat digibind. Uh, you have to treat digibind. Ethanol can be um, ethanol can be um, given to people who have ingested methanol. It literally outcompetes the process uh, because whenever you give um, ethanol, it will compete for that metabolic pathway that would be metabolizing ethanol, uh, the PFO5O pathway, and it will it will outcompete it, so uh, the methanol will not be metabolized. Now, organophosphates will cause a bradycardia, and to that end, you would treat the organophosphate poisoning with atropine. Atropine will block your vagus nerve in your heart and cause an unopposed tachycardia. Um, it may not work with severe organophosphate poisoning. Now, the most common one you will see used in hospital is the treatment for an opioid overdose, which you should all know is naloxone. Naloxone is presented as a uh, colourless, uh, clear solution in one mil, and you, it's 400 micrograms in one mil, and that is one dose. So you can need repeated doses. It essentially is for the complete or partial reversal of opioid depression, and that includes mild, uh, severe respiratory depression. It can be used with all types of opiates and opioids. Uh, it is an opioid receptor antagonist itself and essentially can reverse that back and it will make them wake up very quickly and usually if these uh, individuals are chronic users of opiates uh, and they have um, purposefully, purposefully been seeking a high they won't thank you for it. Um, some of them may be frequent flyers within A&E um, but it will, um, 
it will it will wear off within half an hour to one hour so therefore if the action of the opiate that has been taken lasts longer than one hour you may need to start an infusion of of naloxone that's another consideration so these are the main um the main poisons and the main treatments that you would need to know for finals let's keep it simple and uh, as long as you know that these are what is given so the main ones i would imagine you need to know are and acetylcysteine you need to know the normogram that is in the bnf for how to prescribe n acetylcysteine you need to know about flumazenol you need to know about uh, ethanol um three methanol well that's not very common methanol is not very common anymore um i would know about atropine itself uh, and how it works and naloxone as the reversal agent for opioids this by far is the most common um, is the most common uh, antidote you'll be using in hospital and depending on where you work you could be using it on a daily basis but hopefully not on the wards due to prescription error this is whenever people come in after, after having taken too much at home sometimes you can need to reverse it in emergency situations such as in theatre intensive care or on the ward if the person's on quite a lot of of, of different opiates and um, it could be used, but you must know how to use it in the emergency dose for it is immediately give 400 micrograms intravenously uh, if you have no IV access it can be sprayed up the nose uh, which is what we've seen in the news lately in America.